Welcome everyone to eight minute webinar. This time we've got Bloomberg, very excited. I'm sure anyone listening to this is gonna be super excited. Um, we have Camille Gonzalez joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Why don't you just uh, introduce yourself, uh, tell us what you do at Bloomberg and where you went to school. Um, so my name is Camille Gonzalez. I went to school at the University of Scranton in Pennsylvania. Um, yes, Scranton, like the TV show, um, The Office, I get it all the time, let me just say it now. And in HR, I really started in our engineering campus recruitment team as a coordinator. Um, but now I was able to, it was pretty cool, I was able to really follow my passion and um, the company really said, write your own job description. I said, okay, I want to focus on diversity recruiting within engineering and we are expanding what is now called the Engineering Diversity Recruitment Team. Um, so that's now where I sit. So I've been at Bloomberg since 2014. Awesome. And then just to start, where, where can those students find role, uh, entry level or internship roles? On Bloomberg? So careers.bloomberg.com. Um, our roles are always listed on our website um, and they're always up to date. Now for the roles that my team specifically hires for, we do hire for full-time um, entry level, so junior software engineers up to two years out of college, and we also hire for our summer software engineering internship program. And are they labeled entry level, internship on the site? Are they pretty easy to find? Yeah, so they're labeled as the year being software engineer. For example, right now it is a 2020 software engineer. If it was internship program was still available, it would be the 2020s uh, summer software engineering internship program. And what locations do you hire for? We hire mainly for our three offices in New York City, and they are all very close to each other. Um, and also our office in Princeton, New Jersey. If you ever look at our job descriptions, they look a little bit vague, right? They never have a specific team tied to it. The reason being for our junior software engineering roles, we hire on a rolling basis and we focus in on the software engineers' technical skill sets and their, their, their knowledge to be able to get through the interview process. And once they're at that offer stage, let's say a candidate accepts their offer, they get to go through our um, training program, which is basically like a boot camp program. It's about five to eight weeks in length um, and you go through this incredible program where you learn the Bloomberg stack, Bloomberg technologies, you learn how to hit the ground running and then after the training program where you're in a classroom setting with about 25 other new hire uh, junior software engineers from all walks of life, you actually attend what's called the job fair and we have a job fair, think about it as like a reverse career fair. At the Reverse Career Fair, we have our engineering teams that have spots available on their team actually pitch to our junior software engineers why they should join their team. So we have a multitude of different teams actually talking about technologies they work on, projects that they've worked on, um, and and really trying to pitch again to that to that trainee, to that new hire, why they should join their team. So from the beginning, our new hires have the opportunity to choose their own path, which is why we don't hire for a specific team when it comes for our entry-level software engineering role um, because we give them that opportunity to make that decision um, on your own during training or even at that offer stage we also do guarantee placement what is what does the interview process typically look like for interns or and or entry level if it's different Sure. The interview process is the same for internship and also for full time in the sense of once you um, go ahead and apply and let's say you're ready to interview, the first stage would be a 45 minute technical phone interview with one of our Bloomberg software engineers. So let's say you're on a phone interview, the engineer would give you a call, you would both log into HackRank, which is a live coding platform. Um, there would be, you know, let's say an introduction, of course, talking about your experiences on your resume. And then a technical challenge, a technical problem would be provided. Then that individual, that um, interview candidate, would then solve for that problem utilizing HackRank, but then also talking through the phone with our software engineers. Now, um, were that candidate to pass that technical interview, they would then be invited to come typically um, in-house. We would bring our candidates to our headquarters to finish their interview process. But right now, during um, the COVID-19, 
19 um, times that we are in, we are actually doing video interviews. So instead of in-house, we are doing video interviews via our uh, conferencing platform called Nexi, which is a homegrown platform at Bloomberg. Um, and we actually do two one-hour technical interviews with Bloomberg employees. So again, really utilizing HackerRank um, and other whiteboarding tools during these, uh, these technical um, interviews. Awesome. And uh, jumping to the resume, what is typically the first thing that you look for on a resume, knowing that you're probably trying to get through these things as quickly as possible? We actually go through each resume by hand. When we are looking through a resume, we are looking first and foremost, graduation year, making sure that the applicant has applied to the proper role. There are times where folks apply to the internship program when they had already graduated and they're not uh, continuing studies or vice versa, right? So we're looking at the graduation dates. Um, but additionally, we're also taking a look to see what courses you've taken. The reason why I mention that is because in our interview process, what is what's being assessed, your technical skills that are being assessed are your data structure knowledge, your algorithm knowledge. Um, so we're looking to see that you have those classes on your resume. Um, and then additionally, your communication skills and problem solving skills. You look at objectives on the resume. You can use that space for other information. You can use it to put in you know, your own personal projects, whatever else you want to add to your resume. Um, and it's also similar to cover letters. We do not require cover letters uh, for our applications, so we're not reviewing the cover letters. We'll actually dive into their GitHub, and by we in our business, our software engineers, they'll go deeper. They'll go into their GitHub. What kind of, what have you done uh, on your own? What are your personal projects looking like? So I would say that we lean more on that and their online profile than a cover letter. Do you have an, any advice on how someone can stand out on their resume? So when, when we're looking at resumes, we're not only looking to see your experiences, your internship programs, the courses that you've taken, but how are you involved in your own community? How have you been giving back? Do you have any examples of clever approaches students have taken to getting their foot in the door? I think that a lot of people have it in their mind that, you know, at Bloomberg, you have to have a referral. That is not, that's not true. But um, a unique way to get involved is actually just getting involved with our events. We are constantly hosting events. And even now during this, this virtual time, we're hosting a ton of virtual events, right? So keeping an eye on our tech at Bloomberg um, um, blog. So there's actually our Twitter account, which is at tech at Bloomberg, which is constantly pushing out new virtual events, especially for our software engineers and our software engineering space. What are your thoughts on students reaching out to uh, recruiters or even just other engineers at Bloomberg on LinkedIn? It's important to continue to grow your network. So why not? I don't see a problem with that. In terms of the actual interview itself, um, do you have any tips on preparation? So we just say come as, you know, whatever makes you happy and comfortable is what we want you to wear. Um, so, you know, we recommend business, if you need a recommendation, business casual, but really live your life. Um, and then additionally, something I do want to point out um, for how to prepare is number one, we, since we are language agnostic, you can code in your preferred language in all of your interview rounds. Generally, um, when our candidates are interviewing, we send preparation and resource documents. We try to make sure that everyone is as prepared and as comfortable as possible. But do something else that we do is um, we provide our candidates the opportunity to do a prep call. As it pertains to like how to prepare and some things I would recommend, um, practice coding challenges, practice timing yourself. When we're in our interviews, when our software engineers are interviewing, we're going, they're going to continue to add layers of complexity to see how you adapt to those, right? Start to do that on your own. Start to challenge yourself with, uh, with those approaches. Camille, thank you so much for taking the time to, to give us the, uh, these tips and strategies pertaining to the, the, the process at Bloomberg. Thank you. Thanks, Camille. See you.